to thank you so much for joining us. I am here with Andrew Walmack, which many of you guys heard from last night. If you didn't get a chance to, to hear last night, the first night of Jubilee's message, go check out the link. Those are available for you to listen to and watch. But Andrew, first, I just want to say thank you for what you shared and thank you for your heart and giving your time to come minister here. Um, but we really wanted to use this time just to dive deeper. And I know that everyone gets to often hear you teach from the stage, um, but we, we value just the knowledge and the wisdom that you walk in. And one of the things as a church and the direction that we, we are really seeking the Lord for is how do we integrate that portion of discipleship? How do we walk from knowing we're called to be disciples of Jesus, knowing it's in his word, and how do we do that? And so really just wanted to ask a few questions around that um, mm -hmm. and starting with, and I know this is a very, a very broad, vague question, um, but could you just give us a biblical definition of what is discipleship? Uh, John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus said to those who believed on him, so these were people who were believers, and he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciple indeed. And so that's the definition of what discipleship is. And the results of that, verse 32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So a disciple is a person who continues in the word of God until they get free. Yeah. So if they aren't free, they aren't a disciple. Yeah. And if they don't continue in the word, if they just stop at receiving salvation, but don't grow, they aren't a disciple. And, and you talked a lot about gifting and anointing and knowing a part of that discipleship journey is uncovering what is that unique individual purpose mm -hmm. even in the body of Christ. For those who are listening and maybe want that, they desire that, but just wanting to know what's the first step? How do we? I begin the process of uncovering what is that unique gifting inside of me? How would you encourage someone? There? Well, that's what really turned my life around was because I knew God had a purpose for me, but I didn't know how to get it. And so... I ran across Romans 12, 1 and 2, and Romans 12, 1 talks about you being a living sacrifice when that's just your normal Christian duty. And then verse 2 says you renew your mind through the Word of God, and then you will prove. The word mm -hmm. prove means to make manifest to the physical senses what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So here's the way the Lord spoke it to me, that the will of God isn't really your vocation. The will of God is to be a living sacrifice. Yeah. And if he ever gets your heart, then he'll get your service wherever, whatever uh, realm he puts you into. So most people kind of try and skip the living sacrifice yeah. part, and they want to go straight into what does God want me to do. But if you found out what God's will for your life was, but if you weren't a living sacrifice, you'd blow the whole thing. Yeah. You'd mess the whole thing up. So the correct sequence is you've got to find out uh, you've got to become a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. renew your mind through the Word of God, and then it's just automatic. You will prove good, acceptable, and perfect will. Yeah, and I know each of us have had a different encounter and journey even with the Word, but it's the same Word, alive and active. Um, where where would someone start on that journey? Maybe you pick up the Word of God and it seems a little bit overwhelming or you don't even know where to start reading. How would you encourage someone either maybe first in their discipleship journey of, I'm all in, I want to be a living sacrifice, I want to become a person of the Word. Where would they begin? Well, most people don't understand that they're really two different covenants. And uh, there's, a, there's more than just one blank page between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. It is a totally different way of God dealing with us because Jesus paid for all of our sin and all of the punishment and the rejection that came with that sin. And so you have to really start with the New Covenant and firmly understand what Jesus has done. Like just one verse, mm -hmm. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. And if you don't understand that, you could turn over to Deuteronomy 28 and read all of the curses in the law, and you'd just feel like there's no hope for me because I've done all of these things, so there's no hope. But if you read Deuteronomy 28 through the lens of Galatians 3.13, then you can take every one of those curses that's in Deuteronomy 28 and turn it around and say, instead of me having every sickness and having the mildew and just everything that it lists, I'm redeemed from those things because Jesus took it. So you have to become established in the new covenant, which we live under yeah. now, to fully understand the old covenant that we're delivered from. Yeah. 
And it is very evident in your ministry. I think if anyone were to talk about what what does Andrew Womack do well, and it's the word. Like you are a man of the word. You know the word. It exudes out of you. Um, how did that journey start for you? And I know probably a lot of people watching have heard your testimony, but at what point would you say that you you really fell in love with the word? Well, I got really turned on to the Lord March the 23rd, 1968, and I had an encounter and it put a love in my heart, but I didn't know the word. Mm. And then I was drafted and I was sent to Vietnam and out of, uh, in Vietnam, there was just so much temptation to do things wrong and I had nothing to do. I just sat there all day long. So out of boredom and out of survival to keep me from being drawn away with yeah. everybody else, I just started studying the Word about 10 hours a day. And then when I got home from Vietnam, I had gotten a lot of the knowledge because I'd put the facts in me, but I didn't have the dots connected. And I was praying and just saying, God, how do I get from where I am to where I know you want me to be and when I opened my eyes, I, my Bible was open on my bed, and I heard the Lord say to me, if you will stick your nose in the Bible, mm -hmm. it'll teach you everything you know. Yeah. And so that's how it got started, and I just started devouring the Word. And then as you, as you read it, if your heart is open to it, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you and speak the Word to you, and He helped me uh, connect all these yeah. things. So that's the way it starts for anybody. You have to, you have to put the Word in you. The Holy Spirit isn't going to, tell you what the Word says outside of the Word. Mm -hmm. You have to study it, but then you need the Holy Spirit to enlighten it, to give you revelation. I love that. If you're bored and you're just looking to survive, that's a really good way to start in the Word. Mm -hmm. um, last question. I would love to know, because I think a part of getting the Word in you and what I hear in your in your story is the discipline of it, of sometimes you just got to sit and you got to read it, even when maybe you don't feel like it or it's not the most exciting thing but I think we can get to that place in our journey where, where we long for the Word. Um, maybe someone who's in that place where they want to know the Word, they want to, to walk in that, but they haven't developed that discipline. Um, what, what, what does your discipline look like or what would you encourage them? What's a good way to start of just, is it maybe you need to dive three hours a day or you can start with five minutes? Is there uh, anything that you would encourage someone? Well, you know, the scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So if a person hasn't tasted, if mm. they haven't experienced the word, well, then when you begin, it is going to be a discipline and it may be just something that you do and you aren't real excited about it. But if you will do it yeah. and if you will ask God to open up your heart, you will begin to experience the word coming alive. Yeah. Like in... Uh, uh, Luke chapter 24, the two disciples that were on the road to Emmaus after Jesus uh, left, yeah. they said, did not our mm. heart burn within us yeah. while he opened the word? And, you know, I've seen people, I've seen my wife and my son raised from the dead. I've seen blind eyes. Oh, I've seen some wonderful things, but I can truthfully tell you, Sierra, that the greatest thing I've ever experienced is reading yeah. uh, the word and all of a sudden having that thing just come alive on the inside yeah. of you. And once a person experiences this, now I don't have to discipline myself to study the Word. I'm eager to do it because mm -hmm. I know that there's treasures in here. And man, if I'll just open up my heart, God will speak to me. And it's awesome. Yeah, that's powerful. That's something I know we've been even praying over our church in this season, that we would, we would be the ones of burning hearts, that from encountering the Word, our hearts would burn. Um, thank you again, Andrew, for your time. Just in closing, would you pray over our global community, over our Victor Life family? And I feel like your message, again, I encourage you guys to go back and watch that, is really a commissioning and a call to go out and, and fall in love with the Word as you're following Jesus, but step into all that God has for you. So would Amen. you just pray us out in that? Amen. So Father, I just pray for the people that are watching. And I just like I was sharing, I believe that, Father, you have a specific purpose yeah. for every single person, and you commanded us to find out what it is. And so I just pray in agreement with your word and believe that you are revealing to every person that they are valuable, that you love them, you have unique things for them to do. And I believe that you're revealing that to them as they follow through. We just thank you that you are assembling us together as mm -hmm. a body and that we are going to deliver the power of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank we will you. see you guys tonight. James Brown will be in the house, and we'll see you at Jubilee 2021.